Hi all, Magnus Carlsen has hit back. He's in, in the super strong Bilbao Masters and yesterday de defeated Shirov at 2737. So uh, let's see how Carlsen played this. E4, Shirov replied E5, classical kind of Roy Lopez territory. Um, after Bishop A4, we see Knight F6. And after Castles, now B5 and and here I think this is called the the Archangel variation, or it's similar to that where the bishop is deployed here. So one of the potential pitfalls of this bishop here, rather than uh, say on e7, uh, is kind of highlighted in this game. You'll notice that there's an increasing amount of pressure being placed on this diagonal in this game. So that's uh, really the game outline, and it culminates you know vividly in a very strong attack against the Black King later. Um, so let's see, um, a4, rook b8, one of the targets on black's queen side is this b5 pawn and Carlson actually plays quite cleverly against this, so after, he captures on b5 and plays c3. So c3 is used to break down the black center and to encourage ed from black, but we'll note sometimes, you know, black's sometimes getting a lot of counterplay against e4, so that has to be managed as well. For the moment, black plays d6, and after d4, just simply retreats the bishop to b6. So the bishops are seemingly quite dangerous on this diagonal, putting you know useful pressure on the central square d4. And white's pieces at the moment on the queen side uh, are seemingly quite passive, but uh, things are set to change in this game. After h3, black castles now rook e1. Now the move h6 to stop any annoying pin with bishop g5, especially with the bishop over here, that would be especially um, annoying. Okay, now the move knight a3. So knight a3 doesn't interfere with white's protection of d4. It picks on this, this poor b5 pawn, and it forces a kind of minor concession from black to release the pressure on, e4, on the e5 pawn, playing e takes d4. So often though, black's going to get sufficient counterplay on the e4 pawn. Um, here, after knight a5, the bishop, um, there's two major options. It can go to a2, and may, maybe that has been played before in the position, but actually Carlson chose bishop c2, so it's still pointing at black's king side. Okay, and now we have the move b4, and now there's a very clever little trick in this game. Uh, Carlson um, wasn't too concerned about black's potential for bishop a6s here. He actually played um, the move knight b5. Not that there's too many choices here. The knight can't go to c4, so if it went to b1, b1 that looks a little bit potentially passive. But uh, knight b5, and now here's the little clever trick. So bishop a6, can you guess what Carlson played here? If I give you um, 10 seconds to have a look at this position starting from now. Okay, knight a7, little tactical move. And, okay, what's what's going on here? Why is this knight going to a7? Well, if bishop takes a7, then rook takes a5, and this, this is annoying pressure for black. e5, knight takes e5, say. Bishop e3, we can see uh, white's got a pleasant position here. Aggressive knight on e5. Still a lot of pressure on black's king side. Maybe queen f3 to f5. It looks fairly dangerous. And, you know, black's a bit tied up. That a file is useful for white. So that that's the first um, thing to, to clearly consider. But also, you know, what about rook a8? If rook a8, maybe there's rook takes a5, um, here uh, with the idea of knight c6. I think that might, actually I haven't engine checked this line, but say rook takes a5, knight c6, that would be forking um, queen and bishop. So in the game, after this knight a7, should have actually just played the cautious bishop b7. But now we see this uh, pressure on the diagonal. The scene is being set here now with this move d5. So forgetting about e5, with d5 it means if a bishop later comes on this diagonal, the path is now clear against the black king. After rook a8, there's another point. The d4 square is useful for the return of white's knight to d4. After knight c4, 
It seems white has a very pleasant position emerging now after knight bd4 with an eye on f5 as well. Uh, black's queen not potentially in the most ideal place. Uh, so white actually wants to sort of virtually pin this knight via this f2 square. He plays actually queen a7. Right, but now b3 after knight e5. Carlson finally puts that bishop on that nice diagonal. So he's he's fundamentally kind of opposing this whole strategy of the bishop being here by making use of this diagonal and blacks, you know, in theory it's a, a little bit weaker without the presence of that dark square bishop over there. Uh, but in the concrete of this position, knight takes f3 um, is is going to inflict damage on white's uh, pawn structure. But it's it's um, compensated by this semi-open G file. So if white can coordinate his rook and bishop, then it's going to be great for white, this this um, attack. He's going to have a real attack against the black king. Now this queen c1 is a nice little move actually, not just protecting the bishop, but also offering queen h6s if, if there's ever a rook g1 later. So h6 is a clear target. Knight f5 is also a seemingly dangerous threat here in this position. And uh, maybe it's because of this knight f5 as a major threat that uh, Shirov gave up his dark square bishop. So this bishop is not really opposed now on this diagonal. And it seems actually black's really struggling after this. He plays knight d7. Okay, he's got some some e5 um, control. But if white can always play f4, this seems to be uh, a temporary thing which white can sort of um, try and undermine black's control of e5. So rook g1, and look how white's pieces are getting coordinated against the black king. Rook f7, and now we see queen d2. Now queen d2 actually eyes, in fact, the a2 a2 queen, and maybe you know the sneak idea is e5 because if takes with either pawn, then we have bishop h7 check and just win that that queen. So it's a bit of a sneaky move. Okay, it's also eyeing the b4 pawn just in case uh, white wants to be materialistic. And actually the b4 pawn is let go actually with queen a8. But Colson's not tempted by it and a few people were mentioning it. But uh, white's more interested in black's king with queen takes h6. Let's briefly check out actually queen takes b4. Say this position knight e5. And now c5. See black could try and undermine this diagonal against the white king. And uh, this kind of position gets kind of uh, tricky I think. It's not so clear cut because Black's um, playing against White's double pawns, and if White really hasn't got a concerted um, and determined attack against the Black King, Black could end up being okay. So Queen H6 really undermines Black's king safety more than Queen takes B4, in, in my opinion, and um, is, the, is the most practical way of playing the position. So Knight E5, and now we see a nice little move, Bishop D1. I remember from uh, my friend Alex's games, he's often won games with this kind of manoeuvre of the bishop to g4 and then to e6 against very strong opponents uh, sometimes. It's, it's a nice idea to try and infiltrate these, these light squares with this bishop movement. So after queen um, e8, um, f, f4 might be ambitious here, but it actually might be uh, playable anyway. So f4, say bishop f3, this looks good for white as well. But um, Colson's not too 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 much in a rush. He just actually retreats his queen back to e3 for the moment, and after c5, um, plays just bishop b2. So so Black's actually lost his option of c6, biting at White's pawn chain. So White's got this quite an aggressive pawn chain here, and the scene's still set for coordination between rook and bishop against the Black King. So f4 is now now played at this moment. And then move queen g3, tying that rook. No, no rook e4 because queen g7 mate. So um, queen f7 and now bishop f3. So white's holding up on e4 for the moment and slowly preparing his bishop g4 to e6 manoeuvre. So bishop a6 and it's here bishop g4 is actually played. So black has to defend that. He doesn't really want to give up the exchange after rook e4. Uh, bishop e6. In fact, that's more than the exchange because takes takes the queen can't take because the queen g7 mate again. So something has to be done now about that e6 square. Black humbly retreats the knight, and then we see bishop f5 introducing more threats into the position, like uh, potential queen h4s and bishop takes f6s. 
So c4 was played, trying to generate um, a pass pawn on the queen side, some counterplay. But now queen h4, and it's difficult for black to really defend this attack. White's got a really uh, powerful major asset that black doesn't possess. This huge bishop on that diagonal, eyeing that f6, the poor g7 pawn is pinned. The king's frozen, the knight's really passive, and this bishop's also coordinating very well on the other square colour for bishop e6s and tying black down to h7 as well. So black's just really sitting, waiting to get it here, the attack. Bishop takes d5 is an interesting little tactic. So ed, queen d5, picking up the bishop. But Carlson just calmly plays f3, blocking up that diagonal, making use of the double pawns. So bishop e6. Has has black uh, faced the worst? Well, now comes bishop takes f6. And black is really forced to give up his queen now. After bishop takes f5, e takes, how does black defend the g7 pawn? If if g6, there's queen h8 mate. So black's um, just, just waiting now for rook takes g7 or bishop g7. Maybe bishop g7 isn't as effective. Um, so rook g7 just just forces off the black queen. So we have an interesting situation now with the treble pawns. Black's got this potentially dangerous um, pass pawn here as well. But it's these pawns and, and white's ability to walk the king, which I think gives white a crushing advantage here. So after f6, rook d7, we now see queen e1. So hitting that b4 pawn, d5, black lets it go. If he tries to defend it, well, it looks as though rook b7, there's, there's queen e7 here actually. Um, so if takes, oh no, 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 king f7. White can go easily wrong if he's too optimistic. Let, let's see this position, rook b7 here just to try and protect that pawn. I'm going to cheat, I'm going to stick an engine on here. Couldn't black defend the b pawn? An accurate move here, queen g1 check. And here, queen d4. So this would now threaten queen e4. Okay, so say rook f7, then the pawn is dropping off anyway. Or one of these pawns, either queen d6. Queen, queen d6 would be strong here, just holding on to f6. Okay, so this this looks as though technically, um, you know, white needs a bit of precise play here, but in in the game, uh, black gave up the b pawn here. So white's plan, I think now, is to basically to block this d pawn with his king. That's the plan he utilizes. So he starts. Also, he cuts off the knight's uh, entrance into the position from these two squares with this f5 move, and he he prepares to give up the f6 pawn. Okay, but now he's marching his king a little bit. He's going to march it over to, to block the d pawn very soon. Check. Finally, he's got that block that he needs. So the queen is now free without worrying about black's central d pawn. And we start to get a position where black is just actually just overloaded here, forcing Shiro's resignation after f5. So let's have a look at this game in overview and summary. It was a nice way of handling bishop c5s in this variation, just blasting across this diagonal to the black king, and very nice delicate manoeuvres on the queen side against black's b5 pawn. So this knight a7 is very, very interesting to consider as a new pattern against uh, this opening, perhaps, with this idea of d5, so the knight's actually coming back uh, with advantage now. Um, and black, you know, felt the need to c concede the, the dark square bishop very soon now after queen c1 because of this big threat, you know, of knight f5 and maybe just just king h2 and rook g1. So um, that dark square bishop just proved lethal. And this bishop, at the moment, which was passive on c2, found a way to work into the black position via later f4 and bishop g4. Lying on f5 is particularly effective. i not only e6 but also h7 critical squares. So this is very nice use of the bishop pair and uh, forcing uh, the win of black's queen. And these pawns and, and the queen are just too much. But the first plan is just to block that d pawn, give up f6, block the d pawn with the king, and then start marching the pawns. And in this position, it, I think it's just black's is just totally overloaded after f5. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.